Due to the nature of our work, we have had to face many unknown and dangerous situations. We have witnessed unimaginable and inhumane acts committed against women and children. But through it all, we have learned that we wouldn't be doing our duty right if we didn't continue to intervene to help people. I'm Sandha Mali. I'm an inspector of police attached to the unit of the Bureau of the Prevention of Abuse of Children and Women of the Sri Lanka Police, stationed in Madampe of the Puttalam district. My day consists of looking into ongoing legal procedures for crimes against women and children, family counselling and visits to schools for awareness sessions for both children and parents. Things change with the COVID-19 pandemic. On top of our usual duties, each police station established COVID-19 divisions and I was put in charge to keep track of the guidelines and daily updates that needed to take place. Curfew and checkpoint duties were also equally distributed. As women officers, we also engaged in spot checks and issuance of curfew passes. You always hear people saying first responders are at the highest risk of any emergency. And this to me was very evident during this time. When we heard that a person who was examined at the vehicle checkpoint that I was stationed at had tested positive for COVID-19, myself and two other officers were immediately asked to self-quarantine at home and not report for duty. Quarantine, self-isolation, social distancing were all new terms for the entire country. But we knew the importance of taking precautions to prevent the spread of the virus. People in our own villages began to take it seriously as well. As a mother, I was worried for the safety of my little ones and my elderly parents who live with me. It was mentally exhausting with the added precautions. But following my isolation period and clearance from the medical officer, I was ready to report back to work. During the lockdown, I had to personally handle a cyberbullying case involving a few children in the area and make the necessary reports and arrests of adults involved in child endangerment. It was saddening to see the contents of this video that went viral on social media. After the psychosocial support provided to the children, I sincerely hope this puts an end to their bullying. As an officer handling cases related to children and women, I have learned this through years of experience dealing with cases of cyberbullying, domestic violence and sexual abuse. Something I always tell myself and colleagues around is that people always come to us when they are desperate for help. It is our duty to be empathetic and help them in any way possible. There are other women police officers like me out there too. My name is Sulari. As a Chief Inspector of Police attached to the unit of the Bureau for the Prevention of Abuse of Children and Women of the Sri Lanka Police, stationed in Valiveri of the Gampaha District, I have over 12 years of experience working on cases relating to women and children. With long working hours and additional duties, the past few months have been challenging because of COVID-19. But as in every circumstance that is thrown our way, my team and I stepped up to this challenge. Personally, this situation created a lot of anxiety for me because both my husband and I serve in the Sri Lanka police. In case we got infected, who would take care of our family? Would we infect the rest of them too? How do I protect them? Were some of the questions that kept me up at night. But by following the right hygiene practices and physical distancing measures, I knew I had to carry on to serve both my family and our society. During the lockdown, we saw firsthand some of the difficulties families had to go through, especially women and children. One such family within my police division was Kusuma and her three daughters. They didn't have much, but she worked hard. Her husband, due to past experiences, was suffering from a mental illness that required constant treatment. It made him violent and angry, but with the right treatment, he was able to control this but things changed when curfew was imposed. Kusuma lost her income and this became an issue when her husband's medicine ran out. She had no way of purchasing medication or taking him to the hospital. Kusuma was desperate. Tensions were also running high as her husband became more boisterous and violent. One night, 
His violent beatings were out of control and Kusuma along with her three daughters were all being abused. She knew she had to do something to protect her children. Once the case was brought to my attention, I immediately made arrangements to transport Kusuma and her children to the police station while adhering to the health guidelines. Having heard her story and the desperation in her voice, I knew that I had a duty to protect her. While there was evidence to back her domestic violence case, her husband's mental illness complicated the situation. I had to think on my feet to find a quick solution for Kusuma. Kusuma requested to move into her sister's house until things were settled. While arranging their safe transportation during curfew, I also got in touch with the Gampaha Hospital and made arrangements for her husband to resume his treatment at the psychiatric ward. These are just a few of the many cases that we have come across during the past few months. Despite the long working hours and the personal challenges that we have had to face, we are happy to be of service to people, especially during this pandemic. That is our duty to our country.